Overall, 2023's Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was a solid sequel that does a good job setting up the narrative for the third movie. However, in my opinion, it falls short of the first one in nearly every aspect, aside from the general animation quality, and I also thought the fight scenes in this one were better as well. I thought in particular it suffered from being overly long with some bad pacing, especially in the middle third, and the overexpansion of the Spider-Verse dilutes the cast and cheapens existing characters and plot lines. Personally, I think this movie could have been a lot stronger if it had stuck with Gwen as the main character and done it from her perspective and watched the storyline unfold from her point of view. With all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and give it a sapien score of 7.9 bananas. If you want to avoid all spoilers, now is your time to dip on out of here because I'm about to get on into the good and the bad. As for the good, once again, the animation in this movie is top notch and even surpasses that of the first movie. Second, the soundtrack is once again a banger. However, it's not quite as good as the first, and I was pretty disappointed not to see Sunflower pop back up in this movie. Total missed opportunity. The voice acting was once again superb as well, and they made quite a few quality additions in terms of big names that pulled off solid performances. Overall, my favorite thing about this movie, though, was probably Spot. The fight scene with him is hands down one of the best fight scenes in recent animation in general, and it was really cool seeing basically the Portal video games adapted into a hand-to-hand -hand combat. Lastly, I thought the opening sequence featuring Gwen's backstory, as well as the final act of the movie, setting it up for the third installment, was really well done. And I thought they did an extremely good job of layering in the hints to the eventual twist at the end. As for the bad, my main issues with this movie center around the pacing, as well as the over-expansion of the Spider-Verse. Regarding the pacing, I thought it was pretty wonky throughout, with especially the middle act being really drawn out and slow, and I thought there was just a lot of fluff scenes that could have been trimmed out, especially the barbecue scenes, the parent-teacher conference, as well as the stuff at the Spider-Verse HQ. Speaking of that, I think this over-expansion and the abundance of spider characters really just cheapens the existing characters and takes away from the more important parts of the cast, as well as the fact that the new characters in this movie simply weren't that good. I thought the only solid new addition was Hobie, and he really didn't get all too much screen time. Although I liked Miguel, I think that he was... Pretty disappointing to be honest as he's been gassed up this whole time and somehow gets his ass handed to him by the new kid on the block despite having the capability of literally bringing together thousands of Spider-Men across universes. He really is not that powerful and it doesn't make too much sense how he gets absolutely outplayed and outclassed by a 15 year old Miles. Furthermore, I thought that Peter Parker just showing up in the bathrobe with his baby spider daughter was overdone and overly corny. I think this was really played out and in my opinion was similar to the over humorization of Thor in Marvel. I think they got some good reactions to the humor in the first one and just totally overdid it with this one, kind of just turning him into an absolute buffoon, which cheapens the character overall. Lastly, there's still no further clarification or explanation on why his Uncle Aaron was the Prowler in the first movie, and I think this is just a gaping plot hole, because they treat him like some hero, that he got a mural and everything, and all he did in the first one was the absolute bare minimum of not killing his nephew, and he even hesitated before trying to decide whether or not he should kill him, so... This is still a hanging plot thread, and I'm really hoping that they deliver some sort of answer in the third one, because otherwise it's a little ridiculous. 
Anyways, those are my quick thoughts on Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Thanks for tuning on in. We'll catch you next time. Adios, amigos.